Hey everyone and welcome to the HWBot World Series here at the HWBot World Tour 2016 Asia at Computex Taiwan. Uh, this is the first day here that we have and um, I'm Trufman from Overclocking TV. This is Ligoft, uh, our expert in overclocking from Belgium and we will be commenting today the daily face off to win a place in the final for the HWBot World Series to happen this Saturday. So this is an extreme competition to qualify for the World Championship Final. So the, the guys here today are fighting their way to the final on Saturday and the World Championship will happen at the end of the year. Uh, basically, at the end of this week, we will know who will get one of the last two tickets, the golden ticket for the HWBOT World Championship. Ligoft, what are you expecting from today? Who are the two guys that we will be uh, seeing in one versus one? Yeah, it's uh, one of them, let's say, more renowned overclockers, Hazan. And uh, yeah, he's uh, managed to, let's say, qualify first for this show-off. And uh, Ralph, the new Swedish overclocker, uh, some, I've already said it before, we call him the, the new Elmore, in fact. And uh, yeah, he's been first time here at Computex. He's been putting up some pretty solid scores at HWBOT and managed to pull it off, indeed, during the qualification. The thing is now, of course, they're playing indeed for, let's say, a spot to work on Saturday to qualify for that final golden ticket to go to Berlin for the World Finals. But today they can win prize money as well. Of course, and the first uh, guy will win some cash, the second guy as well. So these two guys are sure to go back home with some uh, some money. And the third guy that was Bullshooter also got some uh, cash from, from, this, uh, from this day. So uh, from now on until Friday, we're going to have one daily face of each day. And each day we will have a one uh, versus one like this to know who will fight on Saturday for the big cash price of 1000 USD and the golden ticket for the HWBOT World Championship. Yeah, and the thing is indeed, uh, during the qualifiers, they can use whatever main board or, or let's say, vendor that they prefer. So uh, I knew Hazan did his uh, qualifying on the new Asus Rampage board and uh, Ralph as well. Bullshooter was using the Gigabyte SOC champion. But now, today is all about ASRock. So these two players, let's say, let's call them like that, these two competitors now have to adjust to the ASRock board. So uh, I have my setup here. I was doing some memory testing earlier on. And I'll show it to you, the viewers, what it looks like. So it's the Micro ATX version of the ASRock X99M Killer. So mine is prepared for LN2 as well. Sadly, I couldn't get enough time to do the clocks on it. But it will be nice to see because they're using the same CPU and it will be interesting to see if they can pull off the same clocks as they did before. Both players are were like running at 5.1-ish gigahertz on, on LN2 on the latest Intel flagship, the Broadwell i7. Broadwell E, sorry, i7. And let's see. Of course, we changed the benchmarks a little bit due to the new Intel release yep. from the previous world stops. But talking about benchmark, because if you guys have any question about the X99 setup and the new Broadwell CPU, the new Intel Core i7 CPU that just got released today, uh, you can tune in tomorrow at 2 p.m. local time and we will answer all of your questions. So everyone is uh, live for, uh, everyone is ready. They did the draw of the benchmark and that's going to be Cinebench R11.5. Do we get like the full out version or did they limit themselves at a certain clock speed? Because they have that's two options. That's going to be full out. For full this out. One. Okay, very interesting to see. And that's also, of course, what extreme overclocking is about. Max the hardware. So uh, I think maybe the judge is going to give them the last warning. So we're getting the thumbs up that the guys are ready to go. So they did like some pre-testing indeed before and they went like minus 100-ish. But before the start of this 1v1, they had to be at positive ambient temperatures. So they really had to heat it up and we can't let the guys wait too long, otherwise they will get condensation. Indeed. So we can tune on the live. Can you hear us? So we will start in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So both overclockers now starting to cool down and try to reach then ideal speeds to, let's say, get into the operating system again, maybe load a profile and start benching. So Hassan is on your right hand side. If you're looking, he's on the blue corner, if we can call it like that. On the left, we have the newcomer Rauf, who's like been, I think, joined HW about like one year, one year and a half ago. So and Hassan a guy got 1767. 
1767. So the first score is in. And this is like the interesting format for the 1v1 indeed. They have like 30 minutes to go, almost one minute gone, and we already have one score. And you always ask me about the tactics truth, don't you? About these 1v1s. And it's, it's like a placeholder. We call it like this. The first score you put in, it's the placeholder score. The other one already needs to boot into the system and it just needs to get everything dialed in. So Ralph leading at the moment 17.67. 29 minutes to go. So they will have to make sure that they get the best score ever on, on this benchmark. So they just have to, uh, to beat their opponent for that. Yeah, indeed, they, ha they have to have the, the highest score possible in this benchmark. So Cinebench, maybe some of you guys don't know what it's all about. In fact, it's a fully multi-core threaded benchmark. So it's using all the cores, this 10-core CPU, Intel i7-6950X can deliver. Really trashing it hard. And I ho really hope we can see again that they can do similar clocks as during the qualifier. So 5.1 for both players. My dear League of, do you know exactly what uh, the two guys can do uh, that, that they did in real life before? So yeah, what kind I, of score they did uh, before before this event? Yeah, I'm just checking uh, Hazan's profile. So maybe a little talk about Hazan, where he is at. So we have hwbot.org and Hazan currently is, uh, let's say, number almost number one in, in his country. He's like been associated a lot with, with, with Aces and we have seen him on a lot of forums giving tips about how to to bench uh, how to imp increase or let's say raise the performance bar of, of your pc and like we said ralph is, is the new guy and i really wish to, we could see like uh, there's screens we see one ralph is like rebooting trying to get in and hazan did the same they're just doing a lot of adjustments in the bios they were used both to using like the aces board the rampage board the new v10 that they have the 10th year anniversary edition and now they have to adapt to the asrock and the thing is what, what we always are seeing is like each vendor uses their own names for the voltages which is sometimes a nuisance because you cannot link <laughs> one voltage to another brand it's really something that you have to explore again you really have to know exactly on that specific product exactly what are the settings for it. Yeah, indeed true. And, and that's usually the hardest part that you have to do is like really, you only have like 50 minutes preparation time before that it starts. You have to get quick, dial it in, and then indeed warm up again till plus, and then they go. So less than 27 minutes to go. Ro has on still not put in a score. Rove still leading 17.67. Hazan still working in the BIOS, getting everything set right. Of course, he gets, he cannot have any assistance. He has to do it all by himself. You still remember the, the Galaxy event where somebody touched his keyboard and maybe did some setting or whatever, and he was disqualified for that. So no intervening by any other competitor. He has to do it all by himself. That's, that's the trick. You're here to demonstrate your skills. So you have to uh, do it all that by yourself. Yeah, indeed. And, and it's like we said, there's only 30 minutes to go to get like everything dialed in. They probably know the max frequency of the CPU, but it was like another motherboard. And we have seen it with Skylake before. So the previous, let's say, mainstream release of Intel. CPUs behave differently on, 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 on other boards. You can have like lower temps that you can reach, maybe not so low, and even the frequencies can, can differ a lot. So they really have to figure out quickly. And, and that's also what overclocking is usually about. You have to be able to debug very, very, very rapidly. What's going on? Why doesn't it boot? I could do push these mem timings on, on the ACES board. Why can I do this on the ASRock? Maybe they can reach higher frequencies on the ASRock. We just have to see what the outcome is of these 30 minutes. That's, um, let's remind everyone of the concept of this 30 minutes match. So they have 30 minutes, they have one benchmark that didn't knew up front. So the, the benchmark got drew just before uh, they, they start the, the, the run. And they have to put out the best score within the limitation of the system. Indeed. Of course, they know all the benchmarks. They have been, been, been doing Cinebench for, for ages for 2D. So they know already the tweaks. The thing is now maxing out the system. How can we do it? How can we reach it? And if you're quick, we can, uh, we're seeing here on my left screen to do the commentary, we're seeing the adjustments that uh, Hazan is doing at the moment for his setup. He has not been able to do like one successful run. So uh, Rove at the moment 
doing the placeholder and just trying to clock up a little bit more. And it's like we said, we always do like a, a, a sort of stable setting in the BIOS, mm -hmm. then boot into Windows, maybe cool a little bit more, and then adjust like a profile of our software and you're good to go. The thing is, will it run on this board? And it's not only the, the main board which is involved, of course. You had to remount. Maybe the, the thermal paste is not that good or the mount is not that good. So a lot of a lot of values that can, can play in for both competitors. And of course, you're on stage now. They were like in their comfort zone before. And now they're like on stage. An audience's view is watching them. Uh, also some friends cheering them on. So it's a completely different ballgame. And then and the, these two overclockers are show off today that they can qualify in less than three hours on the new platform. That's actually Asan. I just uh, talked with him just before, and he's, he told me like, okay, that's the first time I try. I'm trying Broadwell E because actually the CPU was launched four hours ago, mm -hmm. and uh, Ruff was pretty much about the same. Like only today he had the the time to test the system. So for them, that's pretty new about what's coming on today. Yeah, and then you also see the different approach in, in, in benchmarking. I'm like with Rolf, I'm always standing up. I'm never sitting down. And Hazan is like really relaxed sitting down and just hammering the keyboard to get everything dialed in right. So there's always different approaches to, to, to overclocking. I think Hazan is really trying to figure out uh, how, how to get the setup like running faster than, than Rolf, hopefully. And he's using the, the Astroc tool to get it up to speed. So check in indeed the frequency with CPU ID to see if indeed if it sets the right clocks. We have seen it in, in previous competitions where you thought you had set the right frequency while CPU ID showed something totally different, explaining maybe the lower score. So first one now for Hazan, I think. Should be coming soon. So still low clocks at the moment, 3,600 megahertz, so slightly above the stock speed of 3,400. So he's probably trying to build up again and just get that faster run in. We are eight minutes into this uh, first daily face-off here at the HWBot World Series Asia in Computex, Taiwan. 1891. So 1891, a new score set. And indeed, we have to make sure that we get the right one. It's not 18.91. It's 1891, the full score. So indeed, Hassan taking the lead now. And uh, of course, now it's on roof side, on rough side to catch up. And this is this is a fun thing. You put the, the pressure on, on the other competitor. He could have been like in his comfort zone, like, okay, the other one is struggling to get inside the, the windows, inside the operating system, dialing it in. And now Hassan is taking like a substantial lead over Ralph at this moment, but he's running as well. Let's see what the output is. Ah, Hazan, so it's moving 1969. again. 18, 1969. So again, increasing the clocks and Ralph really needing to improve now. If I look at, at Ralph, uh, he's just next to me on, on the main stage. He's like really relaxed and he sat down now. So maybe he's trying to figure something out as well. Both guys using the ASRock software tool inside the operating system to get the final clocks done, final voltages set. These guys are actually displaying a, a great skills because, as we say, that's almost the first time they tried this platform. That's uh, quite impressive to see them already pushing to the boundaries of the system. And we can see on a rough screen here that uh, this Cinebench workload is rendering an, an image, and this image is always the same. The yeah. only thing is all the small square that you see is a thread. So that's one that's of the calculation. Yeah. And now we're getting a new score of 2070. So you see the scores are really, really, really moving forwards the way we, sh we like to see them indeed. And indeed, I have to maybe check with the, the previous generation what the previous high scores were. Of course, we have two cores more now. Let me quickly check. So as you guys can see, like it's rendering the picture and there is some square that are actually quite late compared to the others. That means there's one thread in, uh, inside the calculation that is calculating lower and uh, like slower than the others. So this is actually quite interesting to see if the system is having some issues or barely stable. Um, as you know, these uh, CPU have a lot of cores. This, uh, this benchmark has a lot of scores and um, it, it it sometimes have one core that is always slower than the others because it's uh, maybe either 
too close to the limit or uh, maybe there's too many uh, background process running on that same core. And indeed, just to compare the scores, Hassan is almost breaching 2,200 at the moment. On the previous generation, you always had to run that CPU at 5.6 gigahertz. So these guys still have some headroom left and probably they will approach like uh, maybe the, the, the world record at the moment for 5960X, which was 2,426, but running at 6 gigahertz. So let's see what these guys can pull off. The thing is with, with the Broadwell E is like we have seen, we have, let's say, I did not do the pre-binning, but Christian Ney, so the head judge now on stage, he did the pre-binning and all CPUs were like almost equal, being in between 5 gigahertz, 5.1, and apparently there's one gem inside the batch that can do like 5, 2050-ish. The thing is today, the guys get the hardware, so they get the CPU, the SSD, and the memory, but tomorrow they have to give it back at the end of the, of the show, and tomorrow they have the chance maybe to get like a faster one, maybe also a worse one, but that's of course, it's the draw of the luck. You have to always have to be lucky with the silicon. We call it silicon lottery, of course, in fact. So no improvement for Ralph at the moment. 18 minutes, 20 seconds to go. Rough. Both players cooling down now. Come on, guys, we want to see better scores. We want to see improvement here. We can breach the 2,200 points easily. This should be possible. The thing is with, with Cinebench as well, there are some tweaks, but I think both players know the, the tweaks well. I, I can probably share it on here. You can run Cinebench real time. So we're seeing indeed the, the image which is being rendered by all the cores, which slowly see it moving. If you put it in real time, you don't see anything. You think like the benchmark has crashed, but it puts out a higher score. And that's one of the tweaks that I haven't seen being applied at this moment. There is 18 minutes left in this first daily face-off uh, between the two main guys that we have here, Azan and Rof. Azan from Indonesia and Rof from Sweden. Yeah, and he has like a really big, big, big lead on Rauf. So uh, maybe he's like struggling to do like the 5 gigahertz that he could do before because indeed his score is like substantially lower than what Hazan is, is pulling out at this moment. Oh yeah, we breached 2,200. 22.07 for Azan. So 2207 for Hazan, slowly increasing. So probably Hazan maxed out the Hazan CPU already. And Rauf still stuck at 1767. Maybe we can get any confirmation of what speeds uh, Rauf is currently running or maybe Hazan, Christian. He's so focused he doesn't even hear us. <laughs> He's, he's judging, you know, he's a part of the big judge team and he did an awesome work at the at the last World Tour we did in North America, in, in Montreal, and he was actually uh, really displaying his skill as a as a judge and someone that can, you know, explain and, and dispense why a score was valid or not and, uh, and, and react quickly on, okay, this score is valid, this score is not valid, this is what we have to do in case of uh, if something happened. And it, Hazan was, was uh, sorry, Hazan was pushing a little bit further and, and it already crashed. So he, I think he found maybe the, the Mexican on the CPU and now maybe he needs to find like, maybe I can dial in the memory a little bit more because most of these benchmarks are not only based on processor speed alone. You can always add the tweak that I mentioned before, but you can always maybe play a little bit with the memory and, and Citibench also scales with the memory. So if you can dial maybe the memory a little bit tighter now or a little bit more speed, he can maybe increase the lead or maybe Ralph can catch up. I really hope he can because this is like his first live final, I think, that he ever did. So big applause already to him that he's here. First of all, that, that he qualified to do this 1v1 show off. Let's hope he can put it together. So we're approaching halfway, 50 minutes, 20 seconds to go. Hazan comfortably in the lead, 22.07. Ralph, 1.767 at the moment. The thing is like these guys had to adapt to the to the new board. Like I said before, they like both Avid Asus users and now they have to work on the ASRock board. Something totally different. Pio's layout is totally different as well. The naming is different. Yeah, you just have to get it done. So Azan still running and Rauf as well. Ah, he just crashed. So he's probably 
a little bit too far. He was able to boot inside the operating system at maybe at the max clock, but he was not able to run the Cinebench. As you can see, Roth is uh, unplugging and plugging his SSD. Uh, maybe something wrong. I want to just make sure that uh, everything is fine for, for his system. So the overload of overclocking Massman is watching over their shoulders. He's upping the scores into the OC io sports website that you can follow you can track that and you can have more access maybe to the screenshots as well because i think it's, it's a little bit too different too difficult at these one v ones to do like a proper screenshot which is normally required well you have to be super fast you have to be super fast As and uh, and that's the thing at, at, the, at the speed of this benchmark just run a few seconds right uh when we do overclocking like extreme overclocking like this it's so close to the edge of stability that you don't have time to just okay i'm gonna take time to take the screenshot and i'm gonna take time to upload it in a war one versus one like this when there's 30 minutes maximum you can have you need to be able to run as much as you can so first you need to cool down so that's the first thing you have to start the the the, the, the match and you have to be above uh, zero degree you have to be in a positive temperature and once you have this you can cool down so you lose at least five minutes by cooling down to see uh, where your cpu can can go and then after that you have to bench to do the scores your placeholder the thing that we took uh, at the beginning of that run and following all that you have to do the tweaking make sure you can debug everything and you just have 30 minutes it's super Indeed. tight and hasan slowly building it up Moving to 2250 and doing a new score, 2260. 2260. So really, really cranking it up. And, and this is what we're usually seeing in, in, in any overclocking event. And usually the start is a little bit slow. And then once they get the hang of the system, they get a good feel of the CPU. How cold can I go? How much voltage does it need? And indeed, it's like, wow, 2260. Roof, 2261. 2261 from Roof. Whoa, Whoa. That's, that's a huge jump from his previous score. So indeed, Rauf now putting the pressure on Hassan. So uh, he needs to find at least two points to win this one to get the big cash. <laughs> Approaching the 12 minutes. So indeed, you see it goes really, really, really fast. And now they're doing the run rerun thing. Sometimes these benchmarks give out like a slightly high, higher score, just even without altering anything. Stop, stop, delete, 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 yeah. delete, delete. That's the only way you can get into the BIOS, like hitting that touch and, uh, and as much as you can. Yeah, another trick is to just unplug. Maybe 20, that's the thing what Rolf did. There was like a new score coming up. Ooh, Hazan. Going on number one again. Almost approaching 2,300 points. So really, really, really well. Just to compare it in that, indeed with previous generation, 5960X needed almost 5.8 gigahertz. So I really want to see, Christian, can you tell me the, the CPU frequency Hazan is running at? Do you have time for that to check it out? 5.2? No, not even close. Oh, Hazan standing up now. Something went wrong. Hazan, 2295. Again. Again. <laughs> Good job. You made That's the same it. score. Yeah, that means that it's uh, it's not a buggy benchmark. It's stable. <laughs> so, Ralph in need of, of, of at least 35 points to, to snatch the lead again. 2295, so. Hazan. 2261, Ralph. And running again. So as you can see, there's always a thread that is always late, but it's uh, almost normal uh, normal behavior in Cinebench. There's always one thread that is always uh, slower yeah, than the other 4. one. 2407! <laughs> That's a huge lead by Rov. Well done, well done. 200 points more by this one shot. Yeah, so they're getting the hang of it. Now he's like looking at Hazan. Show me what you got, baby. I'm in the lead at this moment. Oh, but you did he just say, I have no idea what I made that? <laughs> <laughs> it just came out like that. <laughs> Good job here by Rove. Uh, it's, that's the first time for Asan and Rove to, uh, to, to feed her in this one versus one format. This is the first time ever for them to, uh, to, you know, to experience this, uh, this kind of stuff. So it could be very stressful for them as well. Yeah, and this is the interesting part as well. Comparing again to the previous gen, running at 6 gigahertz. These guys are coming so close to beat them scores. Like that's just what we, we like to see as overclockers. Intel providing new technology, higher instructions per clock, maybe not that high speeds that we've done like before, but adding the two cores and we're like almost approaching, let's say the gem CPUs of the previous generation. 
2406. Insane. Hassan is like, don't give in, man. Just continue to bench. But he's like really thinking, how can I get my CPU clocking up at that little bit higher? He needs at least 100 megahertz to, to get that one done. Less than 10 minutes to go. Guys, there's less than 10 minutes to go. Let us know who you are rooting for. Is it Ro from Sweden here on the red team? Or is it Azan from Indonesia on the blue team? Let us know on the live chat who is your favorite. I saw that there's some guys that were SSK, Mercy One, Go Roth, nice one. Uh, let's, let's go, guys. Let's see that the Indonesian community is here as well to support Azan. But indeed, there was also a question by uh, 91 Sanchez. I hope I pronounced that well. Yeah, indeed, it's the same motherboard. I will show it on the on the live again. Oh, that's the live. Okay. So I apparently I cannot switch over. Truthman has just left the spot for a small stop. So indeed, they're using the X99 Mic Killer Edition, so the Fatality board from Astro Micro ATX. And indeed, that is what's going on. You can do the qualifier on the hardware, on the main board that you prefer, no problem. You get the CPU, the memory, and the SSD. During the show-off, you really have to use the main board of the vendor of the day. Today is Astro Day, so that's what they're using now. So, good show already by the guys. 2426. May the best man win, indeed. That's that's your vote, but it's good that we have like a close competition. Hassan walking around, thinking, what can I do? And eight minutes to go. Ralph comfortably in the lead, 2406. Hassan, 2295. And Ralph continuing, really wanting to assure that win would be awesome. First time in Taipei, first time Computex, first time benching for a live crowd. First time board Wally, first time you know versus one. It's, it's awesome, right? It's like first, it's like number one in everything. We're yeah. truly in Taiwan today. I think the over overclockers. I'm seeing them. They like getting a little bit worried. You're always laughing, Shatul. I know, but <laughs> Andrew is no more laughing, no longer laughing. He's getting a little bit worried. Will I fa do the face off with this guy maybe in Berlin? Whoa! So we're getting close. We're getting a match again. Come on, guys. So we as you can better. see, it's like running and rerunning and rerunning as, as much as he can. This is very important to uh, for him to make sure that you know, he can improve his score. Even by two points, you never know how that's going to end up, yeah. right? That could be like all you need to win. And indeed, it's like these 10 cores are so fast. If you do this benchmark on a Pentium dual core, it takes a little bit, a little bit longer <laughs> to complete. So it's, with it's, the 10 it's cores, more time for us to comment on it. Yeah. Yeah, we have way more time to, to, to talk about any chit chat. But indeed, uh, I, I know uh, Shadul did some dual Xeon system. I think it was 44 cores or something like that. And he did like a, on Facebook, like a small video. It took only like three to four seconds, Cinebench to complete. So insane calculating power there. There was a question on the live chat. What are the CPU they're using today? They're both using the Intel Core i7 uh, 6950X. That's the newly launched Broadwell eCPU on the, uh, of course, X99 platform, LGA 2011-3 circuit. Yeah, indeed, and they smashed, they really smashed the previous record on uh, 5960X by the overclocking nights, which was 2426 and was like set like a few weeks ago. Already raising the bar with 30 points, so the, in the new Intel technology looking awesome. This is indeed what I said. That's what we love to see. It can improve our vantage scores. It can improve the 2D scores. Also, let's say benchmarks that use multi-threading will get hammered again. Roof is 24.875. So Ralph continuing to kick it up. And Hazan now staying stuck. 22.95. He really needs to find something to get it done. You see... Everything of, let's say, most of the things are done inside the BIOS. The other guys as well looking at the screen, when, what voltages are these guys setting? What frequencies can they run on the RAM? The timings, everything is, is really vital. And, and especially if you're on a new platform, maybe some guys already got some tips from the pros. Who knows? Come on, Hazan, you can do it, man. Give us a good show. Less than, of approaching the five minutes, Mark. And they are all uh, together restarting the system. 
we have to wait until uh, we can get a signal from the from the system to know what uh, what they can do. Uh, so far, it's extract actually pretty pretty impressive. It's been 25 minutes that this game is on, and I didn't even saw the time fly by. It's it's quite impressive to see them, you know, pushing to the limits and uh, you know uh, trying to get the best core they can. Going to uh, 45 ratio on the CPU, so it's going to be 4.5 gigahertz. In fact, that's not that high, so they're having some some trouble getting it, getting it properly arranged to make it like run. Maybe they will up again the multiplier, of course, in Windows. They're just setting like the V core 1.55, boot into Windows, maybe cool down a little bit more, set the final multiplier, and run and rerun. Just have to wait to get the guys into the operating Oops. system to see what their final scores 17. will be. Twenty-five, seventeen. He's he's improving his lead on on Hazan, and there's four minutes left in this uh, in this round. That's going to be quite impressive to see. Uh, you know, if Hazan can come back from from the from very late and from very far. It was actually uh, late to put the first score, then catch up very fast, and then now it's struggling. Yeah, indeed. So he has some issue indeed to get like the board set to his hand, like he wants it to be, and then let's see. Trying to get it launched and it's running getting the live footage we're watching Hazan set up and he's like mm, he's on. always relaxing like this like yeah. okay can i see the score we'll see yeah, his I, face. I, I, I can't remember how many years he has been let's say call it in the business Hazan 2342 so 2342, it's improving his score, but not as much as you would have expected, maybe, uh, to to, uh, to have his score. Gigahertz. The Rove approaching the 5 gigahertz now, so they're almost maxing out, let's say, the samples that they got by... In fact, it was all engineering samples, indeed, that, that they got running. So, like we said, pre-binning has been done before to keep it, like, fair, as fair as possible, that not, let's say, one... Blue screen! The first blue screen of this face off, and this is super nice to see. I was waiting so long to get it on the live. <laughs> you know that we always have to wait with the amateur overclocking finals. There's like a lot of blue screening going on. Yeah. With the pros, it's usually like quick crash, or they just press the reset before the blue screen even pops up. So they're not giving us the fun truth to shout blue screen. <laughs> So 2517 for Ralph and 2342 for Hazard. Come on, guys. Give us a good end. Let's approach the two-minute mark now. You can still do like a few runs, but rebooting in by inside the BIOS, setting some settings, and then go into the operating system. 2586 is improving his score again. Ruff is improving his score. That is super nice to see. That he is keep pushing. He have a nice lead, but he's still pushing. Hazan is done. Oh, that's... That's a sad story. As I just say no, I, I, can't, I can't no more. Yeah, so he's probably heating up the setup already and, and just uh, getting it assembled. So he probably will Move not see any improvement. 2578, yeah, that's not no improvement. So he had a, Ralph already had like a better score. As I just basically said, I quit. Yeah. There's no way I can come back from that. Um, this is a this is a close call. Uh, I guess he had an issue with the with the cold. Uh, that happened when it's too cold and you have to actually warm up the the, the complete system to uh, to make it start again. And then that's why he's using the the, the blowtorch directly yeah. on the CPU container. And the, those the the temps that we heard indeed were like minus 90 ish, 100 ish to have like a good operating temperature to boot inside the OS, max out the multiplier and then run the benchmark. So you. This time with Brotwell E, it, it's a little bit, apparently, according to the pros, it's a little bit easier to run than Haswell E. So indeed, the game is over. Rove, maybe, indeed. The, do it. What Rove can do is increasing his core one more just before the end, just for the, fa the fair play of, uh, of, this, uh, of this one versus one. But it's pretty much it. So we're approaching the end, 2.586, 23.42. The cards have been dealt. Ralph taking the first cash prize of the day, number one. And we're just gonna wait for the Three official seconds. countdown. Two, one, done. Voilà. This is it. We have Ralph 2586 yeah, points yeah. winning. Okay. 
against uh, Asan with 23.42 points. So this is the first face off of the day. We can see that Asan is coming in uh, in front. He's trying to see. Okay, what what can I do now? I just want to uh, to make sure I can pack my stuff. Roth here displayed an extremely well uh, ex ex displayed extremely well his set of skills here with a completely new platform, completely new format for him, completely new uh, way of doing a competition as well. Uh, well, it's super well done. I, I mean, someone managing to finish the first day of Computex after just a few hours on, this, on the system, it's actually a very, very nice display of, of skills. Yeah, indeed. And he really kept like a calm face. It was like he was like, showed any signs of body language of, sa of stress or, or whatever. So he knew what he was doing. He, he got it figured out quickly enough during the, the only the 30 minutes time frame that he had doing let's say the benchmark and for doing the face off so well done ralph congrats to you man hats off so of course what we have today is we know that um uh, ralph will go back home with 500 usd uh while asan we go back home with 255 usd and we have bull shooter that finished third today that was uh, that will actually win 125 usd uh these are something they can you know uh, add up to their uh, total gain they will have tomorrow uh, for the uh, no for for the for the next day actually yeah. so each day we have a qualifier there is cash price at the end and each day there will be a face off a face off like this but indeed it's like we said that they have to give back the cpu so it's not that maybe rolf had one of the faster cpus in, in in the batch that they that was provided so he has to give it back and tomorrow there will be another lucky draw and maybe some other competitor will get like the good cpu and indeed maybe he's on stage tomorrow so we will see what we have here today is uh, a very nice competition uh, this is overclocking extreme overclocking in a versus mode so they have to uh, display who is the best between these two overclockers at this specific point so we here we have on the left side of the screen Ralph from Sweden that uh, made a top score of 2586 points in Cinebench or E15 yeah or 15 yep. that's the one <laughs> Congratulations, Rov. You uh, won against Asan with 2586. Asan defended his title uh, with 2342 points. He is going back home with 250 uh, US dollar for now, something that can be added up for the next few days as well. Um, my dear Ligoft, uh, this was a very nice kickoff of the first day of this uh, competition of the SHWBOT World Tour 2016. We know that Rov is actually for sure going on Saturday to the semi-final for this HWBOT World Series here in Asia. Indeed, and, and it's, it's like we said, the guy is really, really talented and, and he knows what he's doing. And if he can, like, say, adjust to another setup so quickly, that means indeed that he has, like, the technology already fully mastered. And, and that's the thing that shows us that makes a difference in fact between, let's say, an overclocker who always will be, like, mainstream or the ones that can get get themselves up to the top so daniel Shear has to be afraid very afraid <laughs> uh, my dear league of what did you uh, saw from this one versus one today in terms of skills by roof and hazan yeah first of all the quick adaption of the adoption to to the new platform so broadwell e first new cpu new stuff to learn new voltages that that have been implemented in the biases then again adapt uh, quickly adapting to the other motherboard brand let's call it like that to the asrock motherboard and yeah he got it done i think he is almost at the same frequency that he did on the asus board so pretty pretty impressive stuff as well because x99 is normally high end and if you can do these clocks on a micro atx motherboard that's also pretty solid technology yeah if you can call it because 10 cores is pulling like a lot of or putting a lot of strain on the on the pwm and, and stuff like that on the main board and yeah it held up quite fine so Pretty solid product by the Astro guys. So we had the Sine Bench benchmark. How do you like this benchmark specifically? And uh, how do you think that these two overclockers today uh, managed to uh, display their skills on uh, on this specific benchmark? Well, the Sine Bench benchmark is like really, really, really hard. It's not XTU. XTU is a little bit harsher, but indeed, like uh, you have to really master it. 
And the, the, the fun thing is about sign images that you see an animation going. Yeah, I, 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 I said it at the World Tour in North America uh, because they had, they, were, they had sign bench as well. I love sign bench for the live because it's super easy to see what is going on at that moment. And you can see like everything is going fine or not. I, I, we're talking about the last thread that is always uh, sometimes always late. Uh, you can see it sometimes that the, that the fast uh, at the speed it's actually rendering each of the uh, of the square. Uh, that happened at the World uh, World Series final in North America. One of the contestant Raspath was waiting the last minute to run the benchmark, and the benchmark was so slow because the because of the temperature and so on. The the motherboard locked into yeah, a special I mode. That one. And it was fun because we were expecting. The, to have like a fast run and it was actually the slowest one we ever saw slowest so, one of yeah. the day also wins a prize I think yeah yeah <laughs> uh, well thank you very much my dear Ligoft as you can see the overclockers are packing uh, we will do a debrief with the two overclockers in the next few minutes so you guys on the live chat send us your questions you want to ask to Rof and to Asan. it will be our pleasure to uh, ask them what happened and how they feel about all this uh, one versus one and versus how was the day for the first uh, overclocking with Broadwell E. Ligoft, thank you very much. We will uh, catch you in the next few minutes to get the interview with our guest. Okay, no problem, man. Thanks for having me.